Hey folks, Jayside here. Welcome to a very special Today I Learned. You will finally understand how damage works. It's going to be a deep dive. It's going to be multiple episodes. It's going to be a lot of detail. So get a calculator, get a pencil. <laughs> Let's jump in. First, I want to do a huge shout out to Orange Chris. He maintains the Breakpoint Calculator. By the way, if you want any of these links, you go ahead and go open up my slides, which are linked in the video description below. He volunteered his knowledge and time um, and this would not have been possible without him. He, of course, had many collaborators and helpers and built upon previous folks' work, so you can see his credits for even more. Thank you to Craven for his help in reading the code and reading Orange Chris's code and interpreting. And big thanks to Royal Cheese, because he's just an all-around great guy, and he's helped me with a lot of random stuff. Um, I'll also be referencing his work later. Uh, partial list in the source code, and you can find way more. What will you learn? I'm going to give you a useful way of thinking about how damage is calculated in V2, and then we're going to go way further in that and actually look at how it's calculated. But that second part might not be as important. I'm going to give you an intuition on why critting, headshotting, crit headshot is so good in some cases, less good in others, how strength works and why it's less than stellar in some cases, and what kind of cases it's probably good on, and how boss and damage, especially lord damage works, which explains why certain lords um, are susceptible to certain weapons but not others. What this video is not useful for, actually figuring out your breakpoints or optimal combos or optimal properties on any actual weapon. That is not, this is not how you should proceed to understand a particular weapon and get good with it. You should use the damage calculator that's linked here. You should install some key mods. And if you don't know how to do mods, you can do um, my video here, which tells you how to do it. You should spawn whatever you want to mess with. You should use the damage mod, uh, number mod to see how much damage you're doing, and you can compare that with your HP, and you can mess around. Like, that's the way to learn a weapon. This is how to understand how damage works. So summary one, top level. This is not in the code. This is how I am coin trying to formalize how things work in such a way that's intelligible. The way it works is detailed. But at top, top level, you can say damage is a straight multiplication of these four factors. Effective hero power, which only cares about your sheet hero power. Attack damage, which is a per attack thing. And there's very little that impacts in terms of like properties or traits and talents at this level. It's almost exclusively determined by the weapon that you're using and the enemy you're hitting. Um, but crit damage and headshot damage is at this level. Then there's the stagger system multiplier, which was introduced a couple major patches ago. It's much simpler than you think. And then there's the buff system, which is the stuff most people think about, right? So there you get your shrapnel and your witch hunter captain. And many of those buffs are additive with each other. But what I want to know is once you calculate effective hero power level one, it is multiplicative with everything, total damage. Attack damage, all that information is very complicated, but when you put it all together, you get a number out and that number is multiplicative with everything else. Same with stagger system, same with buff system. Next, design principles. This is what I am reading into Fat Shark. This is not from Fat Shark. This is JSAT's interpretation of Fat Shark's work. One, stacking multipliers should be controlled. They should be deliberate. And if you've played Diablo 3, you know that once you have multiple multipliers, significant multipliers, like a 2 and a 2 and a 2, so this doubles damage, like a headshot doubles damage, crits double damage, strength potion doubles damage. If you put all those three things together and they all stack multiplicatively, you're talking about 8 times damage. Once that's possible, any other type of damage is really small relative to that, and now the game has to be balanced around stacking multipliers. That's harmful for games, unless you want to do full RPGification, which they didn't want. So you have to be careful about how multipliers stack. So they figured out a way to do it that is that, that solves this problem. However, design principle two is why we have to have a huge today I learned about how damage works. Because for Fat Shark, flavor, weapons feeling the way they should, daggers feeling different than a slashing sword, feeling different than a pickaxe should trump explainability in almost every case. That means that mechanics have to vary based off of how armored the enemy is. If they have like a resistant hide versus they're literally wearing big thick armor versus lighter armor. And different attacks, you know, there's a big stabbing attack which should be better against armor because it's better at penetrating, but slashing should be better at hitting multiple enemies for damage. So like 
those types of things. And then there is going to be um, get other elements about whether or not attacking with more strength should matter as much, right? Depending on what type of attack you're doing. So let's try to figure out a way to, to build that into the mechanics. I guess what I'm trying to say is they're trying to make the game feel good and feel flavorful, but they're not trying to make it easy to explain, which can have some issues once they start introducing decisions like RPG style decisions, because then it's like, does attack speed matter more than 10% hero power? Because what does 10% hero power do anyways? Answer black box. Kind of frustrating. The only, again, if you want to know how a specific weapon works, like in terms of damage, and exactly what properties to use, understanding the black box, like which we're about to do right now, is not the way to go. Go back to the sheet. And if you all stop here and just do that, I'm okay. But before you go, you probably should at least take this much home with you. Attack damage, which going back for a second, that's level two. And that's where the, all the information about how the weapon is, strength potion, crits, headshots, and what kind of enemy you're hitting is incorporated, all in level two. It's mostly additive. There is a base damage, which is just based on the type of attack and how many targets you've hit and what kind of target you're hitting. Most things care about those two things, how many targets you've already hit and what kind of enemy you're hitting. Then there is a headshot slash crit component, which is combined in an interesting way. There is a strength component, which is also the component used by Shade, Huntsman, and Dwarf Ranger ults. And then just for the Shade, there's actually a backstab component. And by the way, look, the backstab component is literally additive with these other three components. So crit if backstab adds five damage, critting and backstabbing, that backstab also adds five damage, right? So that's, yet again, go back to design principle one, limit stacking multipliers. Okay, let's talk about the attack damage stacking a little more. Every damage type varies on enemy armor type, as we discussed. Body shots only do base damage. Headshots, crits are complicated, a couple things we can see immediately is they're mostly additive with base damage, except for one exception I'll talk about later. They are not, the way they combine headshot and crit with each other is not one-to-one -one for all weapons, right? If it does double damage going from headshot to headshot crit on one weapon, it does not mean it does the same for another. Um, but in some cases, it's like 15% more damage. In some cases, it can be like 50% more damage if you go from a headshot to headshot crit. What else? Crits are always at least as good as headshots. So crits are better than headshots, except for in the cases where your weapon is really good versus that armor type, like versus infantry or versus like a good anti-armor attack, like a dual dagger stab attack, in which case crits are about as good or equally as good as headshots. Okay, let's talk about Strength Potion. They're hard to summarize, but proportionally, it adds solid damage for attacks that are bad versus that armor type. Proportionally, right? So if you have an attack type that's like a slashing attack versus armor, which usually does almost nothing, it does proportionally adds a lot of damage. Absolutely, it adds more damage versus infantry and monsters. Absolutely, it adds about the same amount of damage versus armor, super armor, and berserker. Because what that's trying to model right there is you're so jazzed up with this magical strength potion that, um, that their armor doesn't really matter very much, right? You just cut through it like butter. So again, it's hard to summarize. It's not always as good as you think it is. You really should go to that spreadsheet plug in strength equals one to turn it on and see how much it does to see if it's really that great versus whatever you're trying to do. But strength bombs, for example, are quite good because it doesn't care about their armor. So mass armor, strength tends to be good. Let's jump into layer one. Remember, layer one is effective hero power. All I need you to take away from this, you're gonna see a lot of slides with a lot of information. I'm trying to give you more information than you really need, so is there for you to refer to. What do I need you to take away from this? Take your hero power, which is written somewhere, you shove it into a formula, it outputs enough some number, it roughly scales with about five eighths of your raw hero power, that's one of the character sheet. If you have max hero power and you're on kata, everything else is scaled by 60, roughly. That's it. 
nothing affects this except for your sheet hero power. Um, and for vast majority of veterans, this is just a number. Let's move on to layer two. Oh, I just went to the very last slide. Slidesmanship fail. Apologies. Okay. Attack damage. Attack damage. So, as I've discussed, attack damage cares about a ton of things. So how are we going to proceed? We're going to take it case by case. We're going to build up your competence and understanding case by case. And remember, most of the damage stuff is additive. So once you understand one thing and another thing, you can simply add those two things together to get the overall. Let's start by talking about body shots. Now, every single attack has an attack modifier. The attack modifier, modifier is multiplicative with absolutely everything in the attack damage type. This scales down based on how many targets you've already hit in a unique weapon by weapon basis. There's no rule that says the second target takes two thirds of the first target damage. That just happens to be the case for this one specific attack we're looking at, which is elf, sword dagger, light one, which is a slash. But what does this mean? It means that for the second target hit, you will do two thirds the damage assuming everything else is equal, okay? So this is trying to just simulate the idea that some of the force, some of the energy has been used up every time you hit a target and try to penetrate to the next target. The next thing every attack has defined, and this is a per attack basis, is a modifier based off of the enemy armor type. So you will do full damage versus infantry. You will do three times damage versus monster but you will only do half damage versus Berserker, and you will do no damage whatsoever versus armor and super armor. And this is the part where you might ask me, Jay, what's an enemy armor type? Okay, go to this wiki, and it will tell you the list. It will tell you the list, if you just scroll down here, okay? So for example, the things you think of as trash enemies, Skaven, Slaves, Fanatics, those are all infantry. Then we have our armored types, which are the ones that ding ding your armor. It's pretty obvious. The berserkers are just monks and savages, with one exception that's not important. Super armor is what you think it is. It's chaos warriors and that new um ben. Okay. Coming back. For your base damage, you literally just to take this guy and this guy and multiply them. That's it, okay? That gives a 0 0.135 multiplier. And if there's nothing else going on, you have no talents that modify your damage or anything else like that, you just take layer one, your effective hero power, layer two, your overall attack, multiply those two things, and you get an eight. And that's literally the amount of damage you would do in the game if that's all that was going on. It's that simple. Let's take another example. Let's compare light four, which is a stab, to light one, a slash. Now remember, if Fatshark is trying to make these attacks feel the way they should, this is a dagger stabbing. That's going to be way better versus armor, right? And there it is. This does absolutely no base damage versus armor. This is 0 0.25. Is that okay? It also, look, they've decided to reduce monster and berserker damage for some reason, right? What's up with that? Wonder why? Well, they also increase the base damage considerably, so it ends up being a wash versus monster and berserker. So Fat Shark has many different dials that they can tune to give the weapon exactly the properties that they want it to, okay? So it's gonna be better versus infantry, it's gonna be better versus armor, it's gonna be roughly the same versus everything else. That's what these numbers tell us, and that's kind of what you'd expect with a stab, right? Okay, some general trends. The attack modifier can be all the way from 0.05 to 0.4, that's the overall multiplicative modifier for everything. Snipers can be high as one. You get your full effective hero power. That's why sniper weapons can do so much damage. This is like a longbow. The drop-off per target is steeper on weapons designed for single target. That kind of makes sense, or especially on attacks designed for single target. Most weapons do their full attack damage versus infantry. Most weapons that do solid body shot super armor damage do the same armor and super armor damage. And most melee attacks do about 75% of their base damage that they would do to infantry versus berserkers. Just some general trends. Okay, 
let's look at headshots. Now remember, headshots are additive with body shots. So if you do a headshot, you get your base damage exactly the same way we just discussed, nothing else to say. You also add more stuff, okay? And then there are three things that change. First of all, for infantry and monster, the headshot damage thinks about armor the same as head, normal armor, right? However, for armor, super armor and berserker, the types of um, armor types, enemy armor types you think of as doing a good job reducing damage taken, well, they're trying to simulate that their head is not as good at reducing damage. Their head armor is not as effective as their shoulder armor, or chest armor. So therefore, if your weapon is quite good versus armor, or super armor berserker, use that armor type, right? However, if it's quite poor, use one half of the base. This is why weapons that if you body shot do absolutely no armor damage on that attack will still do significant headshot armor damage. Okay, so that's one way in which headshots are better than base attacks. The next is the finesse modifier, which is misleading, misleadingly called the headshot modifier in the code. This simulates how much better the weapon is when you hit just right, because it also matters for crits, right? If you hit just right, is this the, it, it tends to be higher on weapons that are more stabby, but there's hard to make a rule about this, okay? Lastly, there is a curve modifier. The curve modifier is kind of hard to explain. How do I say this? It's kind of hard to explain in a flavor way. It's more important to understand it in a mechanics way. But the curve modifier is a per attack extra multiplier. So we've got the headshot armor, just like with normal armor, but it can be higher, it can be better. You can get more damage if you're really bad against the type. You have this curve and you have finesse. Let's talk about the curve. There are five types of curve. Smiter and tank use the same curve. For a headshot, you input 0.5. You look up the appropriate type of attack, and then you output the value at 0 0.5. By the way, monsters for headshot only get a 0 0.25. Certain types of attacks that are called ninja attacks get a 0 0.7 modifier out of it. Other types, linesmen, only get a 0 0.4, right? So considerably less damage for headshotting. This is another way for Fat Shark to differentiate weapons that are good when you hit just right, right? Again, in my mind, I'm thinking about a dagger stabbing you. A dagger stabbing you, really getting damage on um, uh, penetrating your armor, because you got a good crit or something, and really stabbing you in the abdomen is going to do a lot of damage, likewise on the head. But a slashing weapon, you know, get penetrating your armor on your abdomen is going to do eh whereas it's going to do considerably better on your head, maybe, or something like this. So it's maybe kind of simulating that kind of thing, but forget it. Let's just go back to the mechanics. Attack type ninja does much better on headshotting from this curve component, but remember there's also the finesse component, whereas linesman does worse. Problem. You're looking at these names and saying, I know these names. Those are the names of the stagger talents. Nothing to do with it. They use the same terminology twice. And then you say, I know, I'm real smart about the game. I know that Cleave cares about linesman and tank modifier, right? You can figure that out in the armory mod. And then I say, yet again, they use the same terminology, but it's not at all the same thing. There are three different mechanics that are not the same, that don't use the same value, that just share the same terminology. Sorry. More about the curves topping out when we get to crit headshots. An example, these are all the values you need to compute a headshot attack damage, okay? So for sword dagger, hitting first target, headshot infantry. Okay, let's look immediately since it's a headshot and compare the infantry modifier to itself. Okay, well, infantry is always the same as itself, so let's just use the full armor value. Headshot armor doesn't help you here. Let's get the values. Attack is 0 0.135 for first target. There it is. Armor is 1. Headshot armor is also 1. The type of curve for the first target is ninja. Second target is linesman, by the way. So ninja, in a sense it's against an infantry, we input 0 0.5. Let's go back to the curve. Ninja, that's blue. 
0 0.5, look up the value, 0 0.7, cool. That's a 0 0.7. And the finesse value for this attack for the first target is a 1.5, that goes here. Multiply all this junk, get a 0 0.277 multiplier, multiply that by effective hero power and pop out 16.5 damage, or over double what you would have done for a head uh, base. So that's pretty good. Headshot's about a 2.0 modifier, right? Well, well, it's much more complicated than that. Here it is on armor. Now, versus armor, the sword dagger light one, which is a slash, is junk. Okay? So you still do zero base damage. But for headshot, use headshot armor, which is either your armor class or infantry over two. Infantry over two is better, so we'll use 0 0.5 for headshot armor. Curve, same thing. That's a 0 0.7 modifier. Finesse, same thing. That's a 1.5. We go from doing zero damage versus armor, body shot, to 4.25 headshot. Still not a lot of damage compared to the 50 plus HP that you're going to have your storm vermin having, but it's, I mean, it's a lot better than zero, okay? We could also start talking about light four if we wanted to, which is a stab. Now notice that there's no rule here about stabbing attacks have to have a better curve type, right? Because this is a smiter. So I don't know exactly what rules they are using, but you put all this information together and you see that light one against infantry about doubles for both of these attacks. And that's not that uncommon. Headshotting about doubling infantry damage. Storm vermin damage, if you're doing none, of course, is huge, right? So maybe about a little more than half as much as your normal bot base damage against infantry. And an attack that's decent against armor, that damage maybe doubles, okay? And a somewhat similar trend between infantry berserk and berserkers. Summarizing again, the infantry trend is about doubling. Berserker trend is about doubling. Armor depends on the type of attack. Whew. Getting tired yet? Let's talk about crits. So, crits are computed nearly the same as headshots. Remember, they're always either as good or better. Start by getting the crit armor value. That's right, there's a whole other table with crit armor values, not just armor values versus, in, so in other words, the modifier versus infantry, berserker, etc. There's the crit modifier for all of those. This replaces the default armor value for the entire attack for base damage and crit damage. Okay. Then we compute the modified crit armor, which is what the crit headshot component will use. That's either crit armor value itself or for armor, super armor, and berserker, it uses the crit armor value or the armor type slash infantry type over two. Oh my God, Jay, what's going on? There's the same finesse modifier, same curve, that's comforting. There's also a different rule with curve modifier, which is we'll always input a 0 0.5 as an input. Remember for headshots, monsters, you only get a 0 0.25 here, which is considerably less damage. So yet another reason that crits are always better than headshots, okay? This number two component, let me make sure this is clear to you, okay? I'll give you some examples. Let's do a first target crit versus infantry. Remember, you get the base damage as before, except for remember, we don't use armor modifier. We use the crit armor modifier, this second table over here. However, for infantry, it's a one and a one. That is not uncommon. Notice for Berserkers, it's a 1 and a 1. That is not uncommon. For Monster, it's a 2 and a 2.5, so barely changes. Again, not uncommon. So going from the Armor modifier to the Crit Armor modifier usually doesn't make much of a difference for base damage for Infantry, Armor, and Berserker. Or excuse me, Infantry, Monster, and Berserker. However, it makes a huge difference for Armor and Super Armor because we're going from a 0 modifier to a 0.3, right? You could think of a crit as a lucky shot. A lucky shot on infantry? Well, you are already going to do a bunch of damage if you stab an infantry dude. But an armored target, a lucky shot means you're going between the gaps in the armor. That's pretty big, pretty big deal, okay? So our base damage versus armor is considerably better. But versus infantry, it's the same. So there it is. The crit armor modifier is 1. Now it's time to figure out what our crit armor value prime should be. Well, infantry is always the same, so it's still that 1. We got a ninja of 0 0.5, which is a 0.7 modifier, and finesse of 1.5. Put it all together, 16.5. Notice that headshotting and critting are equally good in this case. That's where we get the general pattern. 
If your weapon is pretty good against that armor type, critting and headshotting are worth about the same. Let's look at armor. Armor, tac, okay, and then we need the crit armor value where we compare. We compare, oh, we're doing compare. We just get this guy here, 0 0.3, and then we need crit armor prime, which is the bigger of 0 0.3 and half the infantry value, so 0 0.5. There's our curve, there's our finesse, and we get 6.5 damage, which is compared to like 4, I think it's 4.25 for a headshot. So our crit against armor is considerably better. I hope this makes sense. Whew. What happens if we put crit and headshot together? Well, since we understand crits and we understand headshots, it's not that bad. We do exactly the same rules for the armor modifier that you do for crits. We get the finesse in the same way. Curve works like this. Remember you get a 0 0.5 when you headshot, get separate versus monster, and you get a 0 0.5 as the input versus when you can crit. Well, let's put both of those inputs together. That means we input a 1 into the curve. But the output of curve when you put in a 1 is always 1. So when you headshot crit, it doesn't matter what kind of curve type you're using. It's always the same. One, it's a, you just totally ignore it. For monsters, it's a 0 0.75, so the curve type still matters. Let's do a damn one, okay? So first target crit on armor. So we get our attack, 1.135. We get our crit armor, 0 0.3. We get crit armor prime, mm, half of this is bigger than this, so there it is, 0 0.5. We don't have to use curve because curve of one is one. Cool. And we look up our finesse, it's 1.5. We get 8.5 damage. 8.5 damage. Hmm. Well, that's not that much bigger. 6.5, 8.5. So in this case, it's kind of almost additive, right? It looks like it adds another little bit for going from crit to crit headshot. Now, I'm not going to do the more examples here, but if you go look into, for example, glaive body shotting, head shotting, and crit head shotting, crit head shotting on glaive light one is much better than critting or head shotting. So it's, it's not always the same, right? Some attacks get considerably more out of crit head shotting than others. And it's because of all of these underlying values. Go look at your damage sheet. Some notes. This is head shot and crit power. Headshot power, if you headshot, if you have a 20% head power, headshot power, you multiply this by 1.2. If you crit and headshot, and you have crit power and headshot power, they both multiply. Okay? So headshot power and crit, multiply, and crit power are multiplicative. So I'm thinking about shade right now, which can get 100% headshot power, and you can still stack 40% crit power. You put those two things together, it's a pretty decent multiplier, right? Okay. Crit power only modifies a portion of the entire damage, so it is always worth less than 20%. At the upper range of crit headshot and finesse, it can be worth as much as 16%, a 16% multiplier when you, tried to, when you thought it should be naively a 20% modifier. However, at the low end, it can be worth even less than half, less than half. And if you add strength on top of it, it's worth even less. Because remember, this is additive with strength damage. So how much is 20% crit power worth? The answer is it depends. Sometimes it's worth considerably. Sometimes it isn't. The way to determine whether or not it's worth anything to you is asking, do you crit a lot? If no, hell no. And if you do crit, does it get you to a break point? Does it get to a break point? How do you answer that? Use the break point, sheet, break point calculator. Okay. So, so far we've covered body shot. Headshot, crit, crit headshot. We have a lot left to cover. I'm going to go ahead and call a break to video one here so I can get some tea and rest. We're going to pick it up in the next video.